Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Seacrest, your host for eOrthopod TV. And today we'll be talking once again remotely with Dr. Brett Fink. Dr. Fink is an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon who practices at the Community Health Network in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Fink did his medical school training at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. And from there, an orthopedic residency at the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. And from there, two foot and ankle fellowships, one at Boston University and the other at Miami University. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Fink. It's a pleasure as always, Randall. Well, Dr. Fink, today what I thought we would talk about is ankle arthritis. So if you could, let's start out by talking a little bit about what ankle arthritis is and how a patient uh, may develop ankle arthritis. So what is ankle arthritis? Sure. Well, the, uh, the ankle joint itself, and this is just for those of our listeners that, that aren't really clear on what the ankle joint is, is the joint between the two bones in, that go from the knee to the, uh, to the foot, the tibia and the fibula, and the talus bone, which is the bone in the foot that the tibia and the fibula kind of uh, form a joint with. Um, these bones, uh, like a lot of joints in your body, are covered with cartilage, which is a slick substance that allows your joints to move back and forth without any friction. Um, however, when the cartilage becomes damaged, uh, it begins to wear away, and it can wear away even so much as to show the bone underneath, and that's when people refer to bone-on-bone -bone arthritis, that's what they're talking about. Uh, so basically, arthritis is um, a wearing away of the cartilage so that that friction-free surface is no longer there. And what sort of symptoms does this cause? What causes a problem uh, for the patient when you have arthritis? Well, um, pain is almost always the initial symptom. As the arthritis progresses, the pain can go from something that's just activity uh, exacerbated, meaning coming on after running or doing uh, ex ex especially strenuous activity, uh, to being pain that you really have all the, th all the time. Um, what may be ne less noticeable to the people that have arthritis is the fact that their joint motion is gradually getting smaller and smaller. And that usually only becomes a problem when the motion has become uh, fairly limited. Other things that can uh, kind of signal arthritis is that the joint becomes unstable or crooked, uh, or it can be enlarged and swollen all the time. Those are the primary uh, symptoms that uh, uh, people will um, come in with when they initially have arthritis. And, and let's talk a little bit about the causes of, of arthritis, this wearing away of the articular surface of the joint. Is this something that just happens on its own? Is it normally followed by some type of injury? And how severe does that injury have to be? Well, that's a, that's a good point because unlike knee and hip arthritis, which almost always occur from genetic problems, uh, I would say 90% of ankle arthritis is caused by some underlying condition. Now, far and away the most common is if someone develops um, a recurrent ankle sprain or has an ankle fracture that somehow damages the joint, it can go on to develop arthritis. Um, less common are things like various types of inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis. And then finally, um, primary arthritis, which is arthritis that, that, for, that cause, was caused by nothing that the person did but uh, gradually formed just because they, that it was their genetic makeup is about 10% of uh, the cases of arthritis. You know, I think we probably ought to clarify for patients what they should expect. This notion of ankle sprains causing arthritis down the road, probably we ought to, we ought to quantify that a little bit in the sense of, is this somebody that's got a, just a grossly unstable ankle or if you've had a couple ankle sprains, are you sort of doomed to develop arthritis in the future? Well, we don't really know. Um, I would have to say that, the, that I see people on a daily basis with, with um, ankle sprains and an recurrent ankle sprains, which are ankle sprains that happen over and over again because the ligaments have been damaged and the joint is unstable. Now, I see, I see many, many people with that problem. Occasionally, I will see someone that develops a pattern of arthritis that is that would be explained by a recurrent ankle sprain. So I would have to say that although I don't have any scientific data to, 
to really back this up, that the number of people that have an ankle sprain and then go on to develop arthritis is probably only 10% of the people that even have a grossly unstable ankle. And do you think that this is primarily due to the injury at the time of the sprain that occurs, or is this because of the just the daily instability uh, from the ankle sprain that is causing damage on a daily basis? Well, that's a good point. Um, I really think that the ankle joint is, an, when it is uninjured, when it is, um, when all the ligaments are working well, is a very resilient joint. It almost never develops arthritis on its own. Um, however, if the ankle joint for any reason doesn't fit quite well or doesn't work well, then it can develop this cascade that leads on to arthritis. Um, so I really feel that it, 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 that it has more to do with the day in, day out, gradual wear that uh, is accelerated in a joint that's been damaged than it has to do with the initial injury from the initial trauma. Well, let's talk a little bit about how patients get to your office with ankle arthritis. Is this something that they're generally referred in from a primary care practitioner, or is this something that they show up in your office with ankle pain and they really don't know what's going on? Well, if the primary care physician has gotten an x-ray, it's very easy to diagnose ankle arthritis when it's in its advanced stages. If it's early on and more subtle, um, or, if the, uh, or if the arthritis is, uh, uh, hasn't been diagnosed with an x-ray, then they may just come in with ankle pain uh, and limitations in their ability to do certain activities. So let's talk a little bit about how you evaluate the patient that shows up at your office with ankle pain and, and you're suspecting that it's being caused by ankle arthritis. How do you start that evaluation? Well, first of all, I do an examination, uh, of course. Uh, we start out by uh, asking the patient what his problems are and then doing a complete physical, including looking at how their ligaments are holding up and how the, how the joint is aligned. Uh, because if the joint isn't aligned in uh, a straight fashion such that the knee and the ankle and the heel kind of lie in a, in a straight line, uh, then the ankle may wear out a little bit quicker. Um, and I establish that the pain is actually around the ankle joint, uh, either on the front or the back side of the ankle and not around the other structures such as the tendons and other joints in the foot. Uh, an ankle x-ray uh, can also help a great deal. The x-ray is more sensitive if the patient is actually standing on the foot ankle uh, at the time of the injury because we look for arthritis in a lot of different ways. One are changes that happen to the architecture of the bones. The bones themselves can look a little bit more uh, dense uh, they can have cysts around the joints. There can be spurs along the margin of the joint that can uh, lead, one, lead me to believe that they have ankle arthritis. Uh, however, when they actually stand on the joint and the bone surfaces are actually squished together, you can really estimate how much cartilage is gone, whether the cartilage uh, thickness is even from one side of the joint to the other. And this really helps me a great deal in the um, cases of arthritis that are in between mild, which may not have any signs on the uh, uh, x-ray, and severe, which are, are very obvious to a, uh, a foot and ankle professional. Um, in some circumstances, uh, an MRI may be necessary to really find out for sure, because if the ankle joint is uh, worn out on one side or the amount of wear is very mild, it may be very difficult to tell um, whether they have arthritis through x-rays or alone. So in those circumstances, I do sometimes get an MRI. It also helps me differentiate uh, ankle arthritis from other causes of ankle pain. Any other special tests that you would normally recommend uh, in the evaluation of ankle arthritis? Any lab test or anything else uh, that may be necessary? I would generally only get lab tests as a, if I was suspicious of something else, like an inflammatory process or gout, um, but they're not usually a part of a routine screen. Other tests like bone density scans or bone scans um, are usually unnecessary also. Um, 
essentially if I need extra information, an MRI really tells me the, the most, uh, and therefore that's really the examination beyond an x-ray that I go to most frequently. Well, let's talk a little bit about treatment. What sort of conservative treatment options are available, and, and how do you start that discussion and, and give those treatment options to your patients? Well, there are a lot of conservative options. Uh, and the first ones that we start out with are the simple ones. If my patients are overweight, we talk about weight loss and try to get them on a reasonable weight loss program. Um, we also talk about um, uh, things like using anti-inflammatories. While anti-inflammatories do, um, do not cure ankle arthritis or any other type of arthritis, they can help the pain become less. Other medications uh, like glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate that you can get over the counter, um, these uh, nutraceuticals, these uh, nutritional supplements that uh, can sometimes uh, or are sometimes advertised for it, the jury is really out on whether they help or not. Um, we talk about modifying their activities. Uh, unfortunately, if my, patient is, if my patient with ankle arthritis is an avid runner, it may be necessary to curtail the running activities or to switch to an activity that is less um, damaging to their joint. Um, then um, we discuss uh, things like uh, braces. Uh, and braces are, are more or less something that I go to um, if the patient has ankle instability to help them from having these recurrent ankle sprains or to limit their motion to, be, to make the pain less. Um, and those are basically the things that I think work best for uh, conservative treatment of ankle arthritis. And what about shoe wear or any type of uh, modifications to the shoes? Do, do you ever recommend that to patients? We can use the shoes to help um, treat certain problems with their um, ankle arthritis. Uh, if the ankle is not straight, the shoes can be used to kind of help straighten or buttress the ankle to one side so that um, we're not continuing to wear on one side. But for the most part, shoe wear has a fairly limited uh, uh, impact on ankle arthritis. The one thing that I will say, it is difficult for a person with ankle arthritis sometimes to extend their ankle. And this means bringing their toes up as high as they can. Uh, sometimes it's even difficult for a person with ankle arthritis to get their heel on the ground when they're standing up because their ankle motion is so limited. In a case like that, uh, I think that using a little bit of a heel lift can help make up some of that uh, motion loss and help decrease their pain so that they're not uh, overworking certain parts of their ankle joint that are wearing out more than the others. Well, how fast does this process tend to occur? Is this something that's going to get worse very rapidly or something that may actually get worse over a period of years? Well, most cases of ankle arthritis occur over a period of years. However, um, if someone has developed ankle trauma that has severely damaged their ankle joint, or if the ankle fracture wasn't fixed or stabilized properly, it can happen fairly quickly. Uh, I've seen cases of ankle arthritis in situations like that occur over a period of uh, weeks to months. And so in those cases, or, or in the case where you're getting to the point to where the pain is just unmanageable with conservative means, what are our surgical options? Well, the first thing is to get a good idea of, of how the ankle is, uh, is injured. If uh, in very, very mild cases of ankle arthritis, sometimes there are ways of repairing the ankle ligaments that might help or adjusting the limb so that the um, the heel, the ankle, and the uh, a knee line up. Um, however, uh, for the most part, uh, most of the cases of ankle arthritis I see are beyond that. Um, there are some investigational ways of treating ankle arthritis where they actually pull the ankle apart um, with, a, with pins that go through the bones. I would say that this is still a fairly investigational procedure and um, I haven't started exploring this yet. In severe cases of ankle arthritis where the person is really limited on a daily basis by their ankle pain 
or um, who has to take narcotics on a regular basis to help with their ankle pain, I think that the two best options are, ankle, are either ankle replacement or ankle fusion. Ankle replacement being just like knee replacement where we take out the bones around the ankle, um, usually only a couple of millimeters of the bone from either side of the ankle, and replace that with a metal and plastic replacement that more or less uh, replicates the architecture of the ankle joint. Ankle fusion is where we take uh, the cartilage and the hard bone directly underneath the cartilage out and allow the bone to heal together much like a fracture does. Um, that eliminates all motion of the ankle. Um, but in head-to-head -head comparisons of these two uh, procedures, uh, the satisfaction rate and the function are often nearly the same. Well, it's interesting. You know, I think that for years, uh, surgeons have used ankle fusion to treat ankle arthritis because uh, it has been a, a quite a, a common occurrence, especially after bad ankle fractures, that eventually that ankle is going to become arthritic and painful, and in order to continue to walk, you, you've got to do something. You know, I think that one of the things that was always taught to me in my training was that ankle fusion, a, a correctly done ankle fusion, is probably one of the best fusions that we do because it can really result in a near normal gait um, and a good ankle fusion will last you the rest of your life. You don't have to worry about it loosening. You don't have to worry about um, having it redone necessarily after it's done correctly and successfully. Um, I'm glad to hear that ankle replacement is beginning to rival the, the uh, results of ankle fusion. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more, though, in terms of when you compare the two, are, are we still of the opinion that the ankle fusion is the best operation, for example, in a young person who needs to rely on this for uh, 20, 30, maybe even 40 years down the road? Oh, I think there are a lot of considerations that go into deciding whether an ankle fusion or ankle replacement is the best option. Um, and you've, you've touched on a lot of them. Certainly weight is a big one, previous infections, how badly scarred up the ankle is, um, age. Uh, you certainly don't want to do an ankle replacement on a very young active person because that ankle replacement is not going to last very long. And, uh, and uh, you know, unfortunately what you've done essentially is kick the can down the road to the point where they need another procedure perhaps in, um, you know, 5, 10, or 15 years down the road, um, you've got to really look at the, in a young person with ankle uh, arthritis, you've really got to look at the long picture at, at managing this problem over a period of a lifetime. The disadvantages of an ankle fusion um, are that you really have no motion. Um, and I agree with you that, uh, that a properly positioned ankle fusion is key. Um, in terms of making someone happy with it. However, um, it does wear on the joints that surround the ankle fracture, uh, or I'm sorry, the ankle arthritis. So joints uh, in the midfoot or in the subtalar joint, which is the joint that allows you to adjust to uneven ground, uh, can be overused and sometimes they develop arthritis uh, uh, quickly after this. They've done some studies looking at people 10 to 20 years after an ankle fusion, and they do start to develop arthritis now in the joints surrounding the ankle. Um, now that doesn't always mean that they have to have an operation, but it does worry you over a long period of time as to whether you're not fusing the ankle and starting to wear out the other joints, uh, leading to more operations. Um, Researchers are still looking at the question of which is the best operation and in what circumstances uh, one is better than the other. And even though ankle fusion is not nearly as sexy a procedure as an ankle replacement, uh, it is still a very good procedure and especially in someone that has a, a, a grossly abnormal or malaligned ankle, it can be a very good procedure for them and they can be very happy with it. Like I said, if you look, if you take two groups of patients and just 
uh, randomize them and have one of them have, have one procedure done on one group and the other procedure done on the others, it is really difficult to tell the difference between them in terms of their satisfaction, their need for subsequent operations. Um, and so there is still a lot we need to learn about which patient is more appropriate for one versus the other. Well, what about the downsides of the ankle replacement? Uh, how long do these last and, and what are some of the complications that that you fear as a surgeon when you replace the ankle with an artificial ankle joint that you may not think about um, in a patient that you've done a fusion on? Oh, there are a lot of concerns and, and um, just like uh, an ankle fusion has to be properly placed, an ankle replacement has to be properly placed too or else you've really lost the game before you've even started. Um, the tension of the tendons needs to be very even, otherwise uh, Otherwise, a lot of times, the metal plates uh, that, uh, that you've used to substitute for the joint start to sink into the bones. That's a process called subsidence, uh, where, the, where the joints um, just kind of wobble out of position. Um, there are situations where the metal pieces do not bind properly to the uh, bones. Um, sometimes, the plastic that goes into um, the construction of many of these joints, uh, a substance called polyethylene, can start to wear. And these fragments of polyethylene can irritate the body's immune system to the point where they attack this polyethylene. And in the process, release a lot of proteins and other um, substances that damage the bones. And this is called osteolysis. Um, and you can actually see this on an x-ray where the bone is getting eaten away by the body's immune reaction to these small little bits of plastic that wear away from these joints. Um, certainly over a long run, 10 or 15 years, the loosening of the, uh, um, of the ankle components is very common and revision or redoing this is something that needs to be done on a fairly frequent basis at that point. Now you hope to, um, ideally, you would be doing these procedures on people that, um, whose life expectancy would be shorter than the uh, life of the prosthesis, but uh, unfortunately, uh, ankle arthritis patients tend to be younger than knee, knee arthritis patients, and therefore, um, you can't always uh, count on that, and a great deal of them are probably going to go on to need uh, revision or redoing the ankle replacement or uh, switching them over to an ankle fusion. Well, as you look into the future and try to decide wh what's going to happen in 10 or 15 years with this disease process, do you see anything coming down the, the, the pike that may help us with this dilemma, some better type of procedure to deal with ankle arthritis? Well, researchers are looking uh, into a lot of uh, uh, ways of uh, treating this. Um, you know, far out in the future, 20 years from now, we may be looking at, uh, at actually growing uh, parts of the ankle joint and using people's own tissue to, re to replace uh, the ankle. However, that's uh, unfortunately far off in the future for right now. Uh, people have tried to use uh, cadaver uh, parts to use replacements that they actually made from, um, or that they've taken from people that have just died and uh, putting them in there. And there is some promise to this. However, I don't think that it's available enough to really be kind of a mainstream type of uh, procedure. Um, as far as um, repairing small uh, areas of damage on the joint, um, there are some promising things uh, out there. Um, placing harvested or, or cartilage that was uh, taken from a person's ankle and grown in a petri dish and placing it into these areas of, uh, of damage. Um, again, it's investigational and perhaps within the next five or 10 years we'll see something like that become uh, fairly mainstream. But unfortunately the cost of these procedures is really hampered the ability to, um, uh, to make these uh, widely available to people, and uh, they're not really proven yet, so it's difficult to really um, 
uh, make the case that that should be mainstream treatment at this time. So if I could summarize our discussion up to this point in terms of the treatment options, I think that what you've said and what we've talked about is that a lot of cases of ankle arthritis can be maintained with conservative treatment for years, maybe with a little bit of pain, but maybe with using some basic conservative treatments such as orthotics, limiting activity, weight loss, and some medications. When that fails, we have two primary options. One is ankle fusion, make the ankle stiff, and the other is ankle replacement. And those are probably our two biggest options, other than perhaps um, doing some minor procedures like cleaning out the ankle joint or taking off bone spurs, understanding this is probably not going to fix the overlying problem. Um, is, is that pretty accurate up to this point? I think that summarizes it very well. As we close this discussion, is there anything you feel like that we should discuss that patients should know about ankle arthritis or the treatment of ankle arthritis that we haven't discussed up to this point? Well, um, I would just have to say that, like you've uh, very nicely summarized it, uh, earlier, that um, a good there is usually a fairly lengthy time um, between the onset of the symptoms and doing something drastic like ankle replacement or ankle fusion. Um, and non-operative methods of treating it like weight loss, activity modification, using anti-inflammatories, using braces, can often stay off these, uh, these fairly severe um, and risky procedures for some time, um, uh, even years. Um, so I would, when you first begin to have symptoms which you feel may be uh, related to ankle arthritis, I wouldn't expect uh, your treating physician to go straight to these more drastic procedures. It really is important to be patient with this uh, and to at least try some of these other modalities prior to going on to something uh, fairly significant because, uh, like I said, there are a lot of considerations that you need to take into account before you make the decision to uh, have your ankle replaced or, or fused. You know, one thing I think we ought to clarify for patients is, is the fact that, or, or the question perhaps, of whether or not there's anything lost if they just put up with the pain of ankle arthritis as long as they possibly can. Is there any, anything that would recommend against that, that you're doing more damage or perhaps causing a problem that can't be treated with either ankle fusion or an artificial ankle um, down the road that you're giving up that option? Or, or is it okay for patients simply to uh, put up with this as long as they can? Well, I will have to say that there are some situations um, where the ankle arthritis is either mild or moderate, where there may be some procedure to um, realign the ankle uh, that would help with it. Uh, however, if you have severe ankle arthritis, and you're considering whether to go ahead with this operation or not, I think that the key is really whether, um, whether the ankle arthritis is uh, interfering with your ability to, um, to uh, employ yourself, uh, whether it's interfering with the activities that you truly love, uh, and whether, you need, whether it is adequately controlled with anti-inflammatory medications and other measures such as that. If it is, I would hold off on any other further procedures. Um, however, when it gets to the point where it's disturbing your sleep, keeping you from being able to work, or uh, enjoy family act reasonable family activities, uh, I think it's time to seriously consider um, something uh, more uh, significant at that point. Yeah, I, I think I tend to agree. I, I think that um, that's probably good advice for anybody. Um, I want to thank you today for joining us. Um, uh, look forward to further discussions in the future. So thank you very much. Always enjoy it. Thank you very much.